again, great win for our program, in-state rival. Um, again, we have a lot of respect for East Carolina and Coach Houston, the way he runs this program. But again, very proud of our guys. And first game, we had a lot to improve on. On the offensive side of the ball, pre snap penalties, which was our nemesis last year, had one turnover. We can't have that win big time football games. On the defensive side of the ball, we have to have better leverage. I miss, miss, uh, missed a bunch of tackles. Again, if we're going to pressure and be a high pressure defense, then we have to make sure we land and get in the right gaps. And, and our guys have to execute a higher level. Special teams was okay. Again, we had a bad snap on the extra point. And then our punter, uh, Xavier, he dropped a punt, and we were fortunate enough to get it off. But in saying that, well, we're excited for the win, and we're moving to Miami. And Coach Diaz has his team playing at a high level. Uh, they had a tough loss versus Alabama. But if you look at their roster and our roster, there's a reason why they're Miami, and they're very good. So. No, I thought we did a good job of, uh, I think Coach Ponce and Coach Jones did a great job of keeping both their offense and defense off balance. I thought we had a chance to make some more plays down the field in the, in the passing game that we didn't get accomplished. But you know, both backs ran the ball hard, the offensive line blocked, uh, gave up one sack, and that was just a, a bad technique on the offensive line. But you know, again, I do think we have a good football team. And again, we always talk about going one and no, and, We'll get what we deserve. Last week we came in ready to practice and and um, had a great week of practice. I knew our guys were ready to play. And they, these guys came in on Sunday and, and we were very detailed in our Sunday practice. And they're off today and we get back on Tuesday and Wednesday to, to get this game plan locked in. So I um, hope they show up for practice. When they see this tape, I hope they show up for practice. As far as like evaluating the team that you're about to play when they're coming off of a, the best opponent in the nation right now, um, is it? difficult in those situations? How do you feel about that? No, uh, again, Alabama's the best team in the country, not one of the best, the best team in the country. But Miami's got a lot of great players, and they have a lot of great great football coaches on their staff, and he's done a great job recruiting uh, Miami, and he's got really good football players on this team. And the thing that sticks out to me on Miami is their team speed. And, and again, I'm sure they're not very happy with the outcome, but when you look at the, the tape, those guys got great players on all, both sides of the ball, special teams. It's the speed that concerns you. So we have to do our job uh, to make sure we have maintain the ball. We can't go three and out, and we have to have some long drives in order to have a chance to win. Sean, as you, you talked a little bit about um, some of the things you want to improve on from the ECU game, uh, certainly um, Aylen was using his running backs out on the perimeter as far as very frequently. And of course, everybody that scouts you is going to have seen that. And it was, I, I don't even know if it was so much about the running backs. They were really intent on getting the ball to the outside. Watching Miami's game with Alabama, they do a lot of that same stuff. So, you know, as you're talking about um, improving your leverage and the things you need to do to be, be able to uh, offset that, what are the things that are important to focus on this week? Well, it goes back to our, our keys or our defense is about matching numbers and and getting lined up and keeping the ball in front of you. But, you know, those were, again, missed assignments from our defensive side of the ball that we have to get accomplished. And if we don't get that accomplished, people will, expo will, will, will we be exposed uh, throughout the season. But I know coming in, Coach Jones and his staff made a big deal of it on Sunday to get that uh, squared away. But again, when the back flares, we have a blitz pill, we didn't pill, and then we have to rally to the football. And again, we had poor leverage, poor angles to get to the football, and then we got outran. And uh, we have to get that fixed, fixed today and uh, be ready to go on Tuesday for practice. You talked a little bit about offensive line blocking. Um, that was Bear Hunter's first game at center. Um, as you guys went in, graded the film, kind of looked at what he did, give us an assessment of how well he was able to really get through at that point. Well, he only had one bad snap, so that was a positive. And again, in our offense, playing center is, is tough. I mean, we, we, we ask him to do a lot of things with it. Be able to reach a three technique sometimes, and he, he calls protection for us. And, Again, I'm happy um, that he played winning football, but we, he has a lot of room for improvement. And I think he takes that personal, that he wants to go out and be the best version of himself. And he was very critical of himself on, on the film study on Sunday. And, and again, he has another opportunity to go to play um, one of the top teams in the country. It's a story program with a lot of great players, and, and we look forward to that challenge. In terms of heading into this week, personnel-wise, um, obviously Nick Ross gets ejected for targeting second half of the game, so he misses the first half. 
Um, how was the health of the team other than that? It looked like a lot of guys coming off maybe some cramping issues, and you know, what do you guys do to address that, knowing that we're going to a, a certainly a hotter and more humid lake right. this week? As of right now, uh, again, everyone's a full go at practice on uh, Tuesday. Uh, we have some dings and bruises, but uh, we came out pretty healthy when that. The, the cramping part, which still amazes me, that how we could be cramping down there in Charlotte was 75 degrees. And again, that could be the your nerves the first game. We did, uh, uh, Scott did a great job of getting those guys hydrated. We test our hydration levels, we were fine. Uh, we have to do a better job of eating pregame meal to get some calories in your body. So uh, they have some fuel to burn off during the game. But um, for the most part, we're healthy. A couple of uh, dings here and there, but everyone's, uh, as of today, everyone's a go for Saturday. And do we see Madison Cone step in to yeah, so Madison Cone will have a chance to um, get Jackson Green throughout practice this week. We also have Caden Sullivan, a true freshman. You never want to put a true freshman in that situation, but that's a possibility we could have. Well, I guess going, going off last weekend, this week, it was Frank's first game as OC, um, and now he's going into, you know, essentially going to call a game in his hometown. Can you get a sense of what this last week and maybe going into this week has meant to him or means to him right now? I know it's been his goal the whole time to be an offensive coordinator and, and be able a chance to coach with Frank for four years before he went off to Louisville. And I know he was prepared for the moment, and uh, he was very calm throughout the game, which was good to see for the first time calling a play. I was probably a little more anxious than he was. Um, but you know, I thought he did an incredible job of calling the play, managing the football game. Uh, you mentioned going back to Miami. That's where he's from. He grew up there, coached high school football down there. He's, he's our best recruiter in that area. Um, but again, you've been in this profession long enough. It's, it's about what you've done for me lately. And uh, he's just excited to have a chance to, to play in front of his uh, family and friends and, and to give us a chance to be 1 0 this week. Matt's had a lot of these D5 versus P5 games at this point. I'm just curious from your perspective is, it, is there a little more of a ribbon of importance when you're going into a place like Miami, which is a recruiting area for you guys, as opposed to maybe a game where you guys aren't recruiting? Well, we, we are going to recruit Miami. I mean, you look across the country, some of the best players, high school players in the, in the country come from the 305. I mean, it's just, that's reality. And they're, they're coached very well. They're coached with toughness down there. So I'm not sure it adds any pressure to us of going there to play, but I know that having our name in that area will help in recruiting. Uh, again, as, as recruiting goes on, we're sending three coaches there Friday, Friday night to watch high school football games. And guys are on our recruiting board that, we love to be part of the Appalachian State family. All right, we'll go over to the Zoom. We'll start with Mike Salarte. Hey, Coach Mike Salarte, Texas News Live. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, line play was pretty good offensively and defensively. I know there's still things to, to clean up, as you alluded to earlier. But in your, in your opinion, in your estimation, which is more important for your linemen? Is it their technique or their attitude, their nasty? I think both uh, in coaching the offensive line for a, a long time. You know, technique's important, but it comes down to uh, winning your one-on-one -on -one battles. And a lot of that comes with toughness and want to. And if you guys um, look at our play, I think that's what we want to put on tape is that brings an edge to our program. And, you know, what you put on tape is what you are. So um, we try to play a little bit of aggression, but uh, technique does matter. Good morning. I, I'm not sure how it factors in because it's a new team for Chase, and he plays within our system, not the Duke system. But to have a guy that's played in big time football games and um, and has some some wins last year and coming to our program that that he's able to manage the football game. And one thing we talked about, Chase, um, all through the summer and last week is you don't have to win the football game. You have to manage the football game. And when the time comes, you have to take a, take a chance. And it has to be a calculated chance because we can't turn the football over. And if you look at our games from years past, what gets us in trouble is turning the football over and pre-snap penalties. So um, again, I, I'm very pleased with where he is right now. He has a lot of room for improvement like we all do, uh, coaches, players included. 
but again, to have someone that's played in some big time football games definitely um, makes you rest easier at night. I'm not sure if you can rest easier once you watch the Miami defense. That'll keep you up all night long um, worrying about that. Well, I, 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 that starts with our program and, and the way our, our program is ran. Again, our goal every week is to be one to know. It doesn't matter. It's a it's a faceless and nameless opponent. But when you turn this when you turn this videotape on from Miami, it's a lot different team speed than what we've seen from other, from, from some other Power Five programs. And it's going to be a tough matchup and ones our, our team looks forward to. But again, I go back to the team speed. The, their, the way their systems ran, it puts you in a lot of uh, stress, both offensively and defensively. And again, it's going to be a tough matchup, but one we look forward to on uh, Saturday evening. Thank you. All right, we'll go next to Susan down in South Florida. Coach, how are you? Great, how are you doing? Good. Um, so in 2016, I guess that was your, your first year in Athens Bay as far as a, a co-offensive coordinator, right? Yes, ma'am. And that was, I guess I was in Bloom for that game. Um, first, I want to know you both, you know, your, your memories of that game, what, you know, what you take. I mean, it was so long ago, but that was the only time the Chiefs played. Um, that's the first part of the question. And also, I wanted to ask about, I guess, uh, some guys, it, it looks like you might have several guys Uh, yeah, so to answer your first question, <laughs> there was only probably one good memory of that football game, that was the crowd size uh, that we had, you know, the largest crowd in the school history here. And anytime you can bring in a national powerhouse as Miami and to Boone, North Carolina, I think it speaks volumes for our administration through Chancellor Everts and Doug to, to be able to go out and get those guys, come, get other programs to come to Boone and to showcase our university. Uh, again, we do have some super seniors that were here, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Thomas Hennigan, uh, played in that game. So did uh, Malik Williams. I think those were the two that stuck out to me on, on offense um, that were here. So they do they do know about it. Um, but again, anytime you can play uh, a Power Five program such as Miami uh, in the in Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, Carolina, I think it speaks volumes for our program. So uh, that's probably the only memory I have because after the opening kickoff, it wasn't good. The first play they went 80 yards for a touchdown. So long game. Did he, hand, did he take care of all your questions, Susan? Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Okay, good deal. We'll go next to uh, Christian Peterson. Hey, Coach, um, I know that you were focused more on the, what's going on on the field, but Thursday night, the college atmosphere was back. There were fans in the stands. The bands were on the field. It's been a long time since, since you've experienced all of that. What was it like for you and the team to have a full college It was fantastic. I know that it felt like we hadn't played in front of fans for two years, to be honest with you. And then you're out there and both bands are playing um, and the atmosphere was electric. And then we were in the tunnel in East Carolina, ran out, the crowd was loud. And then when, uh, when we ran out, uh, all of that nation uh, erupted. I mean, our, our, our players feed off that. I think it's, it's great to have, us, have the fans back in the stands, especially our fans. But it's, it, again, I know we're in a pandemic and we're trying to do all we can to be, to be uh, safe. But again, that's what college sports is about, to have your fan base there cheering you on. And I know for us personally, uh, we, our team fed off of the energy from the stands. All right, we'll go next to David Rogers. I was lead. <laughs> the, um, um, you know, looking back at the 2016 team, what's, what's different between uh, the, the, in the two teams today than, than, than back then? Well, uh, Coach Diaz was a defensive coordinator in 2016. Now he's a head football coach. And his team is playing um, to a high level right now. It's, you watch that team, and they were very good in 2016. 
And I know the the score is not what um, it's, it it wasn't didn't look good for Miami, but again, they have a unbelievable football team with a lot of talent. And I know those guys will um, will be ready to play on Saturday. So as we, as we look at it, we'll be prepared for. I mean, it's going to be. I say speed. I can't tell you how fast they are, and they have a big guys up front, and they got great running backs, great receivers. The quarterback is outstanding. Their kicking game is great. There's really no holes that I see on their team, except they played Alabama. Uh, so we we'll have a work cut out for us on Saturday. What were some of the, the holes that you, or vulnerabilities that you uh, saw um, from the from watching the Alabama game? I didn't see any holes in, in their defenses. Alabama made a lot more plays. Again, uh, I know from from a fan's perspective, they see the score and think that you know that Miami is down. They're not down. Again, Alabama is that, that good. And Miami has got a talented football team with a lot of pride. Uh, anytime you, know, you look at Miami's program, it's a, it's a story program. Uh, they won national championships uh, year in and year out. They're in the, the hunt for the ACC title. And you know, I have a lot of respect for Coach Diaz and his team, just the way they present themselves, the way they go out and play the game the right way. And again, um, that's the main thing I keep talking about all the time is team speed. They can run side on the sideline and uh, some of those five yard, uh, 50 yard gains you might see turns into 10 yard gains because they can track you down from the backside and, and they can go sideline to sideline. Yeah, we have five running backs that can play for us. And, you know, Cam and Nate Noel got a lot of the uh, carries on Saturday. But we have Anderson Castle, a local kid here. And uh, Jameer Smith's coming off a, a toe injury that he's clear got cleared yesterday for. And, and we also have Gabe Montgomery. So in order for us to have a chance to, to win and, and keep our guys healthy, we, we need to play more running backs. Again, that's, that's our bread and butter offense, we're able to run the football. And, and we're not going to change our identity of who we are. So. I'm looking down down the road. We'll need more running backs to to help us get that uh, goal accomplished. So uh, you'll see more running backs in the game on Saturday evening. Thank you. All right, we'll wrap up with one final one from Mike Solarte. Thanks, Coach. Coach, the, uh, you talked about their team speed and, and how fast they are. How do you how do you try to simulate that in practice? You, you can simulate formations and and schemes and looks, but speed seems to be the one thing you can't really replicate. Yeah, and. Well, We'll come up with a great plan on Saturday, on, on Tuesday for that. But um, you can't replicate team speed, and we know that. And again, we have a fast football team, but they have a faster football team. And um, we just keep explaining. Our guys see it; they know what's going on. And I just hope we we get on the plane on Friday to go out and play Miami. So um, it's one of the situations that you just have to know what you're going to get into before the game starts. And we know that that speed will be a determining factor in the game. And again, I have a lot of confidence in our guys, but we know how fast and how talented Miami is. As a coach, is that the hardest thing to prepare for in trying to coach your guys up for the week? That, you know, the, 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 speed of the, game, the speed of this team in particular? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it all week long. And it's team speed, but it's also their scheme. I mean, their offense is, is wide open. I mean, they're a, a hurry up offense. They like to spread the ball out. And on defense, you're not sure where the blitz is coming from. Coach Diaz does a great job of disguising his blitzes and, and getting the next guy in the box to, to, to stop the run. And, and again, they're very, very good on special teams. So uh, again, we have to do a great job of, of getting our guys prepared and, and going down there and, and hoping to have a chance to, to win the football game.